Okay, so this is Ambassador Levy. I'm just going to introduce him real quick, um, and then he's going to come up and have a conversation with you guys about China. Um, Please be very respectful. Yeah, please be very respectful. No phones or computers or anything. Um, and give your own right attention. So, um, Ambassador uh, Amikam Levy has had an interesting and varied career. He's currently an international consultant for the president of Webzo Medical University, as well as the CEO of Expat China. Previously, his diplomatic career included representing Israel as an ambassador consul general in Shanghai, consul general in Hong Kong and Macau, ambassador to Vietnam and Laos. He's also held diplomatic positions in the United States, Italy, and Sweden, as well as using his financial and computer skills in a variety of postings in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador Levy has a BA in Business Administration from Hebrew University and has served as a major and deputy commander in the IDF Character Union. Everybody, please give a very, very warm welcome. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. I'm very, very happy uh, to be here. For me, it's, uh, it's a great, uh, indeed, a privilege. And uh, yesterday, I prepared actually uh, two versions of uh, two different speeches. And uh, on my way here, I was thinking uh, to depart from the papers and to make this uh, meeting uh, as an open conversation or discussion uh, because the, uh, the issue of uh, China uh, and China, China-Israel, the relationship, the bilateral relationship between China and Israel, especially now in the light of the uh, so-called uh, trade war between the United States and, uh, and China, which is, uh, in my eyes, very sensitive uh, point, and we have to understand what is going on now. Uh, I would like to speak about the, uh, our activities in China. I will speak about the, uh, the situation between China and Israel in the sense of uh, tourism, uh, economic situation, political situation, uh, a little bit about the, uh, the past, where, where we five years ago in China. Uh, some thoughts, to share with you some thoughts about the future, the, uh, because uh, China, for us, should be a very important friend. And we want China to be in the same coalition uh, with the same reason. And I will elaborate uh, 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 later. Speaking about China, it's important to emphasize that actually we don't understand China. I mean Israel. I mean nobody. Because of a very deep and different culture, because of the structure, the different structure of the mind, the mindset of the Chinese people, they are human beings, and they are with a lot of wisdom, but they are different biologists. Uh, uh, also, in uh, making business in China. The, the world, the culture, the interaction between Chinese people and uh, the people in the West are absolutely different. And I would like to start with a very small example. Two months ago, the vice president, number two, Mr. Wong, paid an official visit to the State of Europe. Mr. Wong never been involved. And if something will happen to President Xi, uh, he will be, Mr. Wong will be the next president. Because he is number two, and in China is one party, 
no questions, Mr. Wong is number two. He will be the second for the time number one. And Mr. Wong, of all countries, decided to come to the state of Israel with a huge delegation. 200 people. 14 ministers. We signed 27 bilateral agreements. So tell me, why? Let's try to analyze the decision process. All countries, why not Germany? Why not Scandinavia, France? Not speaking on the United States because it's uh, obviously because this is not the right time. 1.4 billion, this is a submarine, China, huge. 1.4 billion, this is the population of China. Of all places to come to the state of Israel, a tiny country in the Middle East, in a way, in a tough neighborhood. With 200 people, this is just imagine. 14 ministers. And I would like to open this issue. To you. Let's discuss it. Oh, what's the question again? The question? No. Or should we discuss it? To discuss the idea. Can, do, you, do you have any idea? Why China is. Why the, yes, why the vice president. Of this superpower number two in the world, you know, China, yeah. economically yeah. number two, yeah. to choose the state of Israel, it's like nine, nine million just to <coughs> don't, don't forget the population of Shanghai is 25 million. <laughs> of Shanghai, it's a city in China. Yeah. Uh, the, so, and even nine million, not even nine million. Nine million is like. Uh, so what could? Yes, please. Perhaps it sees uh, Israel as a proxy of the United States, and by um, because you know, the Israel is such a big ally of the United States and the Middle East, it sees uh, making a good trade with uh, Israel perhaps a step to making better trades with the U.S. and ending the trade war. Could be. Please. Uh, I. In part of um, speaking to uh, a group of teachers that came from Chongqing, um, and when I had asked them uh, what brought them to Israel, they said that they have been taught their entire lives that Jewish people are very smart and very hardworking and very intelligent. Uh, it's possible that since China has such good relations with Israel and economically. And they also have this sort of reverse uh, anti Semitism stereotypes, uh, then um, it would be the best country to go to. Interesting way. Just to continue your way of thinking, Chinese people they don't understand the, the word anti Semitism. The, they never, in sense of political situation, the way to win of the Israeli diplomat is to see one day the Chinese representative in the UN or in any other international organization raising his hands for the state of Israel. This never, never happens. And we are in China 25 years, to be precise, almost 28, 26. At the beginning, we had one embassy in Beijing as the capital. And consul general and the consul In the last five years, we have another consulate in Chengdu, another consulate in, uh, in uh, um, Chengdu, Chengdu and um, Guangzhou. And Hong Kong. But Hong Kong is not China. But it is China. But it's not China. It will be a part of China in one year. I agree 100%. Okay, let's go back. So this is a country. 
they recognize the Sikh believer. We have a very close and open and interesting strategic dialogue between the leaders. For you to know, it's not a state secret, but for you to know that the Chinese president, Mr. Xi, he, he used, he's not speaking to leaders. It's not in his agenda to speak to other leaders on the globe. But I want you to know that at least once a month, he likes to speak with me. He's the Prime Minister of the State. We open everything. We want them to understand the real threat. The real threat in our eyes is Iran. We don't have any other threat on the modern, we don't see any other threat on the modern the world, the Western world. We think that Iran is the, uh, the main threat on the, the free world. And uh, we are trying to open the eyes of the Chinese leaders, leaders and to tell them, just look at it. This is the situation in Iran. And, uh, but then back to the UN, we never see, we, we never, it's, it's never happened. Just once, no, not even once. Uh, and we are working very hard about the image of the Jewish people that, uh, in the eyes of the Chinese people. We are working very hard to keep this, this image. I can tell you I'm as the head of mission, uh, also as ambassador in Vietnam, and then maybe in Hong Kong, and in Shanghai, I opened my eyes in the morning, and I was telling to myself what I should do today in order to keep the bright image of the sake of Israel in the eyes of the children. And this was, this was my concern. I remember myself, it's on my shoulder, not to disappoint them. Because we need them. Yeah, I have a question. Please. Um, you just uh, said that you, you're, uh, you're having a, Israel is having a threat by Iran, and are you trying to say that Israel is trying to get a cooperation with China in order no. to respond? Or because like the US? No, no, no. It's not in this. It, uh, the, the idea is not bad. Uh, uh, all in general, but I'm not. Uh, this is uh, just imagination. Wait, can you explain what, what, what exactly happened? Like what, what, why should the Chinese and the Israelis are cooperating together? So I admit that Israel has a really smart people, and Bibi Netanyahu is one of them. And um, what, why would China and Israel be together? I mean, it's, there's a trade. Um, uh, there's a trade a, a trade a competition uh, between China and uh, the U.S. Why don't the Israel just stay with the U.S., which is one of the powerful country, and why why should they cooperate with China? This is a very good question, here. and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are working very hard to keep it like this, and uh, uh, maybe to to strengthen the image uh, in the eyes of the Chinese, but the. Uh, the, the real answer is innovation. Chinese people, they are looking for innovation. They are looking for abilities uh, to think outside the box. And uh, I can tell you, in my age and in my position, and after 40 years as a diplomat in the service of the state of Israel, innovation is in the state. The state of Israel is so strong that uh, I'm not sure that it how strong it is. In all fields, I'm not speaking about all kinds of uh, inside problems, you know. This is a democracy. This could happen. Everything is open. Just remembering China is not a democracy at all. One party. Here we have, if I'm not mistaken, 14 parties. In China, one country, one leader, no arguments, everything is very, very clear. 
you should drive in China. It's an amazing experience. Rules are rules. No shortcut. Protocol is a protocol. In business, in medical, in the hospital, in, in the school. Just imagine. Listen to this. Every day, every student in China, 8 a.m. in the morning, he is listening to the anthem of Chinese people and he sees the flag of China going up. And he is standing down. Every day, 8 a.m. in the morning. Just imagine what will happen after 20 years later. They cannot understand when we speak about ah, prime minister is like this and like this and we don't like this and we don't like this and the orthodox and they are they don't understand what we're thinking about. How dare we say any or think a negative thing or negative thoughts about the leaders? Because they are the leaders. Leader is a leader. But really, innovation is executive, and this is why this call, this place is a startup nation. By all means, in medical, in water technology, in high tech, in clean tech, in space, agriculture. Yes, please. Um, my question is why? Why would China care about the situation in, in Iran? Why would China care about our relations with Iran? What does China have to do or gain about such things? China has a very nice contract with Iran. They have nothing against Iran. Also, by the way, we don't have also a state opinion of the Jewish people. We have nothing against the Iranian people. They are not our enemies. They are not our target. But Iran said in a very clear, almost every day, that their the destination, the intention, is to destroy the state of Iran. It comes from the leadership. The leaders. They are, you know, it's not from here. They are connected to, uh, to, they are connected to God. So once you are connected to God, in, in, in this kind of, uh, in this kind of um, concept, you cannot convince them logically that uh, to, to threat the, uh, the world, it's not the right thing to do. And China is, Chinese people are very pragmatic. They think about the country. They think about the money. Uh, by the way, the budget situation in China is like this. They have in reserve 3.8 trillion US. Reserve. You, you know how many zeros? <laughs> 3.8 trillion. <laughs> Reserve. That is billion. So it's not a question, it's not a budget problem. They don't have a political problem. They don't have a social insight problem. They have like, on the surface everything is uh, very clear. But this is really a super. And I mentioned it before with uh, them. We are also super in a way. By the way, I am here thanks to Ben and to his thank you for your initiative. Thank you for having me here, man. It's a great a pleasure. I really enjoy speaking to
bad in the world. The only way for you to believe that is difficult because I consider you as the next uh, leadership of, uh, of uh, the world, the new world, in Israel and the world. And I said to Ben about the diaspora of the Jewish people that uh, we consider the Jewish living outside Israel, the diaspora, uh, as part of the strength of the state of Israel. Uh, so thank you, Ben, for uh, everything. Uh, I can continue? No, just tell me when I have to. Before you, know, in a minute, I will give you money uh, 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 and we will listen to you. But before that, I would like to, to mention briefly uh, uh, two or three more points. Two reasons. Five years ago, only 47,000 Chinese people visited Israel per year as a total. This year, Last year, to be precise, more than 120,000 Chinese people entered. Direct flights. At the beginning, I remember myself in Hong Kong, 2010, only twice, twice a week, a direct flight by an airline. Today, two companies, CX and NY, from Hong Kong, daily flight. Same from Shanghai, daily flight, direct flight. Same from Chengdu. Same from uh, Guangzhou. Same from Beijing. Two companies, Beijing. The Hainan and the Lai. Five years ago, it was like twice a week, only at uh, 10 hours. Uh, this is amazing. And this happened only in five in the last five years. So with trade volume, five precise and real numbers, five years ago, 7.5 billion, the total trade volume between China and Israel. Today almost 15. In five years. This is amazing. About 50% of this import export. So the numbers are really <coughs> and, uh, 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 and we are <coughs> thinking about the future. All in all, by all means, everything is like this on the right. Everything except one thing: the political one. This also will happen. This is the process that suddenly we will be sure enough, we will be one day we'll be surprised, and suddenly the Chinese representative in the UN will raise his hand for the state. Uh, we are absolutely sure that this is the right, that this will happen sooner than the later. Just a question, not to make mistakes from our side. To, to be patient, to plan well in advance, and to work very hard in order to achieve all that. Yes, please. Do you think that after that first um, hand raise? Many, you mean, uh, you mean that, I mean that other countries? That after the first time that China will vote for yes, of Trump, course. This then is they a, will just this keep is spiraling. A, absolutely. And yes, this is the momentum. Trump decided to move the, uh, the embassy to Jerusalem. Big deal. Open uh, the Geneva Conference. Um, um, I'm not, uh, um, Convention. Geneva Convention. Convention. Uh, Article 75. It's not a big deal to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem because there you can see all embassies should be in the capital. Very clear. This is part of the diplomatic protocol. So what happened? He just adjusted the reality 
to the international convention. Very clear. We don't have a, in Shanghai a, a head of mission our ambassador always, but we call it continent because it's not a capital. That's why the embassy in Beijing, because Beijing is the capital of China. And what happened after this? A lot of countries will follow. In five years, you will see at least five or six countries with the embassy in China. It should oh, be it's already happening. Already happening. Already happening. Already happening. What uh, one second, yes. How do you think these relations affect China's Very, very good question. This is very delicate. You know, the, the, Mr. Fogel visited Israel about a month ago, and he was asking, what is the love story? They are open conversation because what is the meaning of the last uh, the love story between Israel and China? All, only this question speaks per itself. They are concerned. And the Chinese are concerned. And we are concerned. That's why it's very, very delicate. Uh, especially when uh, you don't know what I know that one person will not make it. This is President Xi. He cannot. He cannot. He will not. Because he knows he is a leader. Read about him. Google him. Read about him. Read about the history. About his vision. About his uh, character. About his uh, charisma. It's something really, he will not make it safe. And I hope that we will not go wrong. I hope that uh, Trump will not go wrong. And suddenly one day the world will be changed. This is, I uh, don't want even to think about it. So everybody is keeping and doing the utmost in order to keep everything in order. For the Chinese people, it's a piece of cake, because this is part of the character, part of the structure of the mind, to be in order. Body man, no body man. Nobody will speak with hands as I do. You Chinese people, like this, you cannot analyze the body language. You cannot see the real agenda. You have, and even after many, many years with experience, I can tell you, I personally, I did a lot of mistakes, analyzing, to understand why the conversation, very simple conversations, as head of the we spoke, we exchanged views and experience, and I said, okay, the situation in Israel is like this, what do you think? And I heard things, and I was not alone, and we went out of the room. And I came back to the office in order to report to my government, and I reported something, that we were sure that this was the situation, but it was not. Because that, they, uh, the real agenda was different, and we didn't understand it. Because of the wording, because of the culture, because of the state of mind, because of the character of the Israelis, we know <coughs> everything and we will handle it, and I know what I'm doing. But no, a lot of mistakes on the table. And then in the morning, I. I'm telling myself, I can't, I'm not stupid. At least don't repeat these mistakes. Sure enough, after a while, again. So what is going on here? As I said at the beginning, we don't understand that. And, uh, 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 and this is an uh, amazing situation, but fascinating situation, challenging. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so I want to get just, um, to get back to the start and to ask you: um, Do you think it's maybe possible that the Chinese come to Israel to learn about our education? Since they, I know that they see, um, they visit uh, a lot of schools, and uh, like they, like you said before, they see us as very smart people. So, 
Do you think this can be one of the reasons that they came here? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I want to tell you, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, but the uh, education system of the Chinese people is very stable, very strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think that we have to study from them. I'm not, this, mm -hmm. this place is a diamond. Uh, but at, uh, in general, the education system in Israel, it's not uh, between 1 and 10, it's not 9 and not even 8. Uh, so I'm not sure because all the time they say, you know what we can we want to come to Israel, we have a lot to study from you, you are innovation, startup nation, you, this, you, you succeeded to flourish the desert in 70 years. How, what, it's a magic. I do agree. We have a lot to study from you. How can you explain that they visit in so many schools? Because, uh, first of all, it's a lot of curiosity and collecting information. And uh, the main the name of the game is the collect information as much as possible all the time and uh, to learn from this but I'm not sure that uh, they are, uh, they are the main uh, reason or the main intention is to see something in the education something, uh, see, uh, system in Israel and to uh, wow, we will implement it in the Chinese system one, they cannot do it because it's absolutely different because of the culture. Secondly, they cannot do it because I'm not sure that uh, it will be worth it. Uh, but a lot of students. Speaking about academy, speaking about students, speaking about uh, uh, education uh, um, system in Israel, just for you to know that we have a branch of the technion in China. So uh, it's important to know. Likashin, uh, you know Ben, who is Likashin? Likashin is a Chinese, a Chinese tycoon. Uh, he donated um, about uh, two million, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, two hundred thousand million US to the Technion in Israel. In exchange, it was seven years ago, he asked to build a branch of the Technion in his, uh, um, in Shantor. Shantor, this is the place in which he was born. And the Nobel Prize winner, Aaron Shekhanover, 2012, chemistry, if I'm not mistaken, he is now the head of the Technion in China. So just imagine, we don't have it even in the United States, in northern other countries, a branch of a Israeli uh, um, institute in China. <laughs> and the leader is the Nobel Prize winner. This is amazing. And Chinese people, students, amazing people, right, are, are studying. And this actually, Li Kaxing started it uh, uh, many, many, uh, only seven years ago. And this is also to demonstrate or to emphasize the right relationship, even in the academic world between China and Israel. I met this guy, and he asked me, <laughs> it was a very nice conversation, and he, uh, he asked me, tell me Amitam, he said, define for me please the word innovation. And uh, I would like to, to ask you, what do you think? What is the meaning of innovation? When we start, we said startup nation. What is, what is the meaning, the real meaning? How do you analyze the word innovation? Yes. Um, I think innovation means finding creative solutions to problems by breaking boundaries. comes from uncertainty. 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 Unc
uncertain. It's when, when, you, when everything is complete. Everything is clear. But, but you know what he told me? He said like this, in my eyes, the definition of innovation is a combination of art and science. And art and science, and you, and curiosity and science. Because he is absolutely convinced, and he is right, that we can provide all this kind of extraordinary, unique solutions to a very unique problem because of the army, because of the struck of the, actually we don't have any other choice, we have to survive in the very beginning. We started when we uh, sold uh, oranges, now we sell high tech all over the world. And uh, uh, this is uh, another maybe uh, definition to innovation, somebody wants to share his uh, Sure. Look, here. Uh, trying something new that nobody has told nobody has to do, but basically uh, you're going to try and sticking with, with, with something uh, until it's right. All questions actually are right. You cannot go down here. The main thing is that you have to be proud uh, that uh, in this place in Israel, this is the name of the game. Uh, if you will uh, see carefully, you can see it almost everywhere. Also, while you are driving, uh, while you are uh, doing everything, anything in Israel, innovation is the name of the game. And uh, uh, we are very proud to, uh, to, be part of, uh, to be part of this uh, amazing country. More questions? Um, considering the fact that we're in this Human Rights Committee, we're discussing the idea of human rights in China, um, about the Uyghur Muslims and uh, the education camps, um, can you further elaborate your point of view uh, about that situation as uh, a, a, a representative in uh, China? Representative is that in China? Uh, when, I, uh, when I was invited to, to come, that was actually the topic. Of the uh, of the uh, and I asked the river to change it because I one I am not so familiar with this uh, person. Secondly, I prefer to speak about China, Israel, uh, past, uh, future, and uh, past, present, and future. And thirdly, it is a very complicated issue and. Change the, the title and uh, to have the privilege to speak about uh, the issues that uh, I speak to. So, yes, please. Um, so, uh, somehow have already been, uh, already like been represented as like um, a really close ally with the US and they have been treated war and somehow do you think that because like right now in the Middle East Israel represents as like the strongest ally of the US in the Middle East. So I just want to see the point of view from the Yeah, Okay. I understand. Um, this is a this is a right uh, way of thinking but uh, I would like to put it in a in a simple way. The capital and the opportunities in China. Innovation in Israel. In order to flourish, as China is flourishing, it's about 6.8% uh, per year. Uh, they need innovation. They need technology. 
they need the ability to understand better things. And they are looking at the world. Africa, no. Uh, Scandinavia, not really. Uh, Europe, maybe Germany, because Italy is an economic situation in Italy is like this and France is like that, but Germany is a superpower, yes. Uh, suddenly in the Middle East, the real place, the diamond. Startup nation, good for us. Let's keep it aside. Let's continue. Latin America, no. United States, you know what the situation. Asia, Singapore is a very small country. By the way, it's a strategic sister of the state of Israel. It's a great place. And they were from the very beginning. Say 51, 50 years ago, not mistaken. Since then, till today, all decisions, Singapore weighs in that. So, this is uh, like a, an example. But suddenly, you have a country in the Middle East with a great <coughs> local knowledge, wisdom. Because I don't want to analyze the reasons. Very easy to make it. If you want, we can speak about it. How come? What, what is happening here that we are in this position in spite of all the difficulties? Because one day, 70 years ago, one night, seven Arab countries decided to destroy the state of Israel. 48. And then 56. And then 67. And then 73, and in between as well. And we succeeded, and in 48, man, we were not even a million, we were about 700,000. Uh, 700, that was the situation, only 70 years ago. And we succeeded to defeat seven Arab nations in one night. How come? What is the secret here? Is it magic? What is going Maybe. I have a question. Uh, I would like to have the opportunity. Sure. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> China, apparently, uh, President uh, Xi Jinping, he's done a lot of great things for China, including improving the economics and for the citizens. But he's also removed all guards, so there's nothing to stop him from being in power for the rest of his life. And this can't this can cause another situation like there was in China in the 70s, which harmed China a lot. And he also um, credits, credit points for people that can basically, eventually, if they're not doing good for the country in the opinion of China, it can basically prevent them from getting fast Wi-Fi and along with other things. What does Israel have to say on it? Especially when you said that the children are going to be I, I don't have a, a clear-cut question. It's, it's hard to say what will, uh, what will uh, happen in the future. It's um, the situation that this president has been uh, in China in the end of his life. It's, uh, it's amazing. He nominated this himself, but still, it's not that somebody nominated him. He decided that he wants to be the leader of this people forever. And it happened in one day, in one week. It's not, uh, this is amazing. So he is actually the pilot of a, a huge aircraft. with 1.4 uh, passengers. They are sitting like this. The airplane is very, very quiet. So, you no, know, and very good soldiers. Commando is a commander. Rule is a rule. Discipline is a discipline. A protocol is a protocol. No arguments. Everything is very clear to everybody. The leader is here. Number two is here. The vision is like this. 
my relevant uh, uh, standing is not uh, relevant, actually. It's a, a unique place. Who visited China here? Hong Kong, okay, we speak in a minute about Hong Kong. Only one. I, I really, I recommend you as your friend. Go to see China. You will be amazed. The experience is really something very strong, very different, and very unique. It is important that people like you in your age, in your state of mind, in your um, desire to succeed and to make a change in the world, to understand China. Because China is playing a very important role here. And uh, instead of to go to Europe to, uh, or to the United States or other places, I really recommend to go to see. It's enough to see Beijing for four days. Suddenly you will understand that we are very, in the West, very, very small. And we have to, a lot to study from them. The respect between people, the ability to listen, the ability to give you the, um, to, the, the, the feeling that uh, somebody is uh, listening to you. At the end of the day, the bottom line is different. But you should see the families. You're the leader. You, you should see the interactions in the families between the children and the parents. Ah, 
I don't have a question, so you can pick up more, a few more. Uh, okay. okay. Last question, maybe? Yes. Okay. We've um, been like, um, all the time comparing um, China with Israel and moving to the cities and everything. But you might forget that Israel is, uh, is in a conflict. At the same time, and there's neighborhoods that are also need to be considered, and then just ignore them and uh, ignore them and do whatever Israel wants. I mean, this is how it happened. And you mentioned that I have uh, also. I mean, I have several questions, but I, I'm trying to combine them together. But yeah, um, and do you think organization, which is the UN, is doing like anything? Like when they uh, did a voting uh, about not moving the embassy that was uh, by what well, was submitted by Turkey and I guess another country I forgot, that not moving the embassy and the embassy, uh, the, uh, the embassy was basically moved the uh, United States and uh, it was moved to Jerusalem. And you say that you need you you want you're expecting us to be our leaders and if you believe in peace and change, how do you think we can make this change in the future? <laughs> I absolutely believe in peace. Um, instead of peace I believe in peace. Uh, I'm certain that there is no other way. This will be part of uh, this business. It's, um, it's a question of time. It's a question of the ability of actually three partners to break dreams, to compromise, and this will happen. As everything in history, and you can open the books, it could 100 years about till now. I don't know about the future, it could be soon, it could be 100 years ago. Uh, I, I, nobody can tell. For the policy, but peace is necessary for the state of Israel, for the uh, Palestinians, for the sake of the citizens, for the sake of the children, for the sake of everybody. It's good for economic, it's good for political, it's good by definition. The question is how you do it. I'm not a politician and uh, it's, uh, I can speak to you to share with you my thoughts, but uh, actually you see that it's not easy at all. Because of many, many reasons, I'm not saying that the state of Israel, a lot of mistakes we did. A lot of mistakes, the other, the other part, uh, uh, the, a lot of mistakes the international community did. But uh, one thing for sure, it's, uh, this must happen. And we must do everything needed in order to achieve it. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> block or 
of uh, 52 countries automatically out of 200. Almost. Yeah. So it's not uh, it's not uh, a place in which we can play. Here and there we have success. Usually people are countries are voting not exactly with the state of Israel. Uh, and we are fighting because we need to survive. And as I said before, we need to bring peace. <coughs> and uh, this is not a, a complicated mission. Thank you so much. Thank you.